The Rebel Capitalist Show. For my viewers who might not know your backstory, can you get us up to speed there? I was just listening to an interview you did with Lynette, and uh, it's really fascinating how you kind of went through the 2008 period, the GFC. It was uh, turbulent, volatile, to say the least. And then you really learned from those experiences to make you kind of what you are today. <laughs> That's, you know what? What really got me going is not so much what happened to me because, well, I'll, let me just cover that real quick. When the market melted down the last time, I was not as sophisticated nearly like I am now. And, and I lost I lost an epic sum of money in the market. And uh, some of my best friends lost more than that. I mean, lost not just their money. They, their marriages went down the toilet, uh, real estate they bought. I mean, I watched people get devastated. And I said, you know what? No, this isn't the way this has got to go. We, I need to talk about this. So I literally got out there and I started talking about it. That's, that's really it. I started strategizing from way back then. What can we all do to not let this happen to us again? Where are the opportunities here? And, and that's really what I've done since that time. But yeah, um, look, I, everyone knows it. I've, I've explained this clearly that that event kind of really did hurt me from a financial standpoint. Whatever I had put in the market at that time got evaporated. And uh, I was young enough to recover, thank, thank God. And uh, I just refused to let people lose again. That's yeah. really what I'm all about. I want to keep people on the right side of this, uh, put this into perspective for them so they can understand what's going on simply, like you do. I love what you do. You're bored and you're three steps. And it's just, it's perfect. And I think you're really making a difference. And that's what I think is important for all of us to do, make a difference in, in, in other people's lives. Yeah, but it's, it, I think you had this epiphany moment, kind of, at least that's what it sounded like, that really helped you shape your macro framework now. Because I know you're a trader and you really get into the weeds day to day and week to week, but you still have this really awesome macro framework. And if my memory serves me right, you, you kind of sat at your computer one day and you're just trying to think through what had happened during the GFC and what happened with this quantitative easing, one, and all the, the money printing and the Fed taking their balance sheet to $4.5 trillion. And it kind of dawned and you're like, wait a minute, this is how they're going to try to fix the problem. That, mm -hmm. Well, quote unquote, fix the problem that they never yeah. fix, but it's going to continue on and on and on. They're never going to stop. The only yeah. thing they're going to do is just print more and more money. And that really helped shape, shape the way that you see the world now. Am, am I stating that correctly? 100%. I mean, look, it's, it's, it's all rigged. It's all fake. So what I tell people that follow my work is since we understand the bigger picture, what's going on here, this is what we need to do to stay yeah. ahead of it. I mean, you got people trying to make wild guesses about things. It couldn't be easier, at least in my view, how people can make the system work for them. We understand what they're doing. They've never fixed the problem. Just like you just said, they never fixed a thing. They want us to believe that they fixed the thing, fixed nothing. All they've done was in, inflate a massive bubble in the debt market. It's a monster in my opinion. I, it's really a threat to human life, in my opinion. That's how bad it is. Yeah. Uh, on the back of that, we've reinflated a stock market bubble. We've reinflated a housing. But they can't stop. They can talk about it all they want. Uh, they've robbed the middle class blind of trillions of dollars in realized wealth via suppressed rates. Uh, it's, it's, it's insane what we're seeing. But the insanity of it, I guess, at the same time, presents opportunity. I, I always tell people, that, you know, it, in times like this, sure, there's uh, people that are going to get hurt, but there's also a lot of opportunity. And what I want people to see is the opportunity. Where should we be as this entire thing around us continues to develop? And it's still developing now. I, I don't think we've seen anything yet uh, with regard to the distortions that already exist uh, in the markets uh, on, on everything is distorted on a global scale. I do believe, uh, as you do, that this will at one point, get very real for people. And uh, I want them to be aware of that too. And, you know, I'm not out here trying to advocate advocate for people to be buying stocks because I don't tell people to buy stocks at all. I trade derivatives. I trade options. You know, uh, people get confused. Oh, Greg, you're a market bull. Should I be buying stocks? I don't really think so at this point. In time. I, don't, I don't own a single stock. 
I sold all my core positions months ago, right before the market melted down, when we fell like 15%, or uh, almost 20%. And since that time, I've been just trading. Uh, I will not enter this market again, a core position. I like to own large cap dividend paying stocks in the right environment. This is not that environment, for me at least. Yeah. So I will continue to trade this market. I will continue to bet against the debt, become my own central bank, hold gold, hold silver, cryptocurrencies as well. I happen to love them. You know that probably. That's how I see this right now is how can I make this whole system work for people in the most basic sense? So it's simple for them, kind of like you do, exactly yeah. what you do. Yeah. So you're doing that for yourself. You're taking your own framework and trying to apply it at, uh, at, at a daily level or a trading level. How can people do that on their own? Let's say they're very, um, they're not sophisticated investors. They're just getting into this, or maybe they have some degree of sophistication, but maybe not enough to go into the option market and mm -hmm. buy calls or, or do something like that. So how do you suggest that people kind of enter this arena and then how should they execute so they can protect themselves and protect their own purchasing power over the next, you know, two years, five years to weather this storm, this storm that you and I both know is coming? Absolutely. Well, you know, look, I tell people all the time, and I've said this for a decade now, you know, realize the, the situation we're in. It's an epic bubble of debt, and it's going to unleash havoc on people at one particular time. So you're going to be on the opposite side of that trade. And, and how you take the opposite side of that trade is hold an anti-debt unit. Like I've been saying since day one, look, I am a major advocate of holding precious metals. I've been saying this for literally a decade. My most favorite of them all is physical silver. I also think holding cryptocurrencies away is a way to bet against the debt too, because these are not central bank issued anything. You own them. Uh, so this is how I, I look at it. No, from from a market perspective, you know, trading angle, I try to make this as easy as I can. I literally post what I'm doing, what I'm buying, right on. I have a free newsletter. Yeah. And it just, everything, great. I just bought this. Like I said, I call them my lions. Lions, I just bought XYZ, this strike price, this expiration. That's what I do. And it's, so I just, you know, and I roll out of these positions. Like if, once I pull the profit out of these, I roll into something else. If I buy long-term expirations, um, you know, 2021, generally J June, July, April. And, you know, so I don't care about moves in the market like today. The market fell 400 points. I don't care at all. To me, it's an opportunity to to average down. And that's what I do. Uh, and anyone that's been following my trades <laughs> has to say, wow, Greg, Greg's on to something here because it does work. I'm not saying I won every single trade. I've had three or four realized losses since I started my my newsletter back in uh, March mm -hmm. and we're talking about 80 trades that I've already posted up there so the record is pretty outstanding and like I'm no smarter than nobody else I just study these markets I, I know how to play the game um, and that's what this is to me it's a game it's a dangerous game where the people are being that being led to the slaughter on an epic scale I mean, look, look around us does this seem like a prosperous environment for anyone well for some it is for the well-off for the rich it is, for everybody else, they're going down the toilet and they're going down the toilet fast.